Hi, Andy Nelson here. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, the different types, just briefly about the different types of intellectual property that are out there or IP. Uh, I think a lot of people out there, if they hear the words intellectual property, they automatically think patents, inventions, Silicon Valley, lab coats, that sort of thing. Um, partially true, but that doesn't paint the whole picture. So intellectual property, what falls in that category. And when we talk about intellectual property, we're talking about kind of this broad brush term uh, that applies to a lot of different intangible things, right? Because we think of personal property as things like this, you know, the shirt, pens, that sort of thing. We think of real property or real estate as, hey, it's land, warehouses, offices, that sort of thing. But what is this, these intangibles? There are a lot of things that are intangible out there and intellectual property um, it covers a number of things that aren't your conventional you know, property, like say personal uh, and real property, but they are things uh, that uh, the law over time has uh, come to treat as being like property. And so it recognizes it have, as having a lot of property-like qualities. So I mentioned a few moments ago patents. So patents is number one, right? Patents um, is a type of intellectual property that really affords protection to your mousetrap, you know, it is your invention. So classically, it is your, you know, machinery, your device, you know, this kind of the better mousetrap, right? A novel, new, useful mousetrap, that sort of thing. But it can also be uh, things like uh, new uh, novel processes, think of different ways of doing things, methods, that sort of thing. Um, it may be chemicals. Uh, it may be plants, a uh, different kind of a patent, a plant patent. And there are even patents that are afforded to certain ornamental features, not utilitarian, uh, utilitarian things, but rather uh, ornamental features of products may be afforded what are called design patents. So that's your patent, okay? Um, two is the copyright. Uh, a copyright is a protection that's afforded to uh, an author's creations. And I say author, you may think someone who writes something, but this has a broader... Uh, definition. What it means is uh, someone who creates um, anything from literary written works to graphic art, fine art, photography, architectural drawings, uh, lyrics, uh, plays, um, recording sound, um, oh boy, audiovisual works, right? Movies, that sort of thing. So it covers a lot of uh, creative endeavors. Um, and basically gives the author the right to control copies and adaptations and the like of those endeavors, those products. Third is the trademark. The trademark, uh, quite simply, is what I call your commercial identity. It is, uh, it are the, it's the distinctive thing or plural things that connects you, your brand, to your consumers. So Apple, Apple's Macintosh logo, for example, Verizon's name. Um, or in another video I gave the Prudential example, Prudential the name for the insurance company, get a piece of the rock, it's slogan, uh, or it's iconic uh, logo, which is the Rock of Gibraltar drawing. So those sorts of things that connect uh, your brand to consumers, the visual representation, sometimes audio, little clips like, um, you know, like NBC's chimes, ding, 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 I think it was, I think it was on key there. <laughs> so uh, that's, a, that's kind of your third column of intellectual property. Fourth one is the trade secret. Things that you keep secret that give you a competitive advantage over uh, over others by not being known. Um, information, typically, so the kernel's original recipe, um, or I still think um, Adobe's some of its source code might be a trade secret, those sorts of things, or the Coke formula, classic one. That's kind of your fourth one. Um, those are the classic ones. There's a fifth one that I think is in there as well, which is the right of publicity. I'm not sure that's recognized in all states right now, but I believe it's recognized in some of the bigger ones, if not all of them. And that basically goes to you. Um, you know, not you as a celebrity necessarily, but you, the individual, typically, I'm just paraphrasing here, but you have the right to control commercial use of your, your name, your likeness, uh, your image, that sort of thing. So that's another one. So these are the kinds of things, and there's some you know small little what we call sui generis types of um, um, pieces of law, or if you will, that that also kind of fall under that category of intellectual property. But I just gave you the big ones. So they are different. It's not just the lab coats uh, and patents, but it's a variety of things that fall under that. Um, and as a business owner. Uh, you want to be aware uh, of those different types of intellectual property out there so you can learn to recognize them because you may have them or may wish to develop them or acquire them. 
uh, and they just may be your most valuable asset when it comes to uh, the value of your business overall. Anyway, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to shoot me an email. Talk soon. Bye-bye.